Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. It's me, Dr. Vijay Kumar. I am making lecture videos for the benefit of mechanical engineering students. In this video, we are going to talk about fundamental concepts that are involved in the dynamic force analysis of reciprocating engines. Having studied the static force analysis of simple planar mechanisms like four bar mechanisms and slater crank mechanism by graphical method in our previous videos, now it's time to move on to dynamic force analysis. So let's get started. So if you could be able to watch the video till the end, you should be able to describe the importance of dynamic force analysis. Then there are some key terms like inertia, inertia force, inertia torque, D Alambert's principle, you should be able to explain better. At the end, we are going to talk about kinematic analysis of reciprocating engines. Also, a numerical problem will be solved on the same. Why dynamic force analysis? As you could see, this six cylinder IC engine, externally applied force is nothing but gas exerted by the fuel during the expansion stroke on the engine cylinder. That is the applied force. But whenever we have the accelerating bodies such as piston and connecting rod, then there will be dynamic forces, which we call it as inertia forces. If we consider inertia effects of these moving bodies like piston and connecting rod, in addition to the externally applied loads, we call that study as dynamic force analysis. For example, here steam turbine that is being used in the modern power plant is shown. It runs around about 50,000 RPM or so. When speed is particularly very high, in that machinery, the inertia effect will be enormous. If these forces are not balanced properly, if you happen to have a smaller unbalanced mass in this reciprocating and rotary machinery, those unbalanced mass will create enormous dynamic force, especially when the speed is very high. What will happen if you have very high magnitude of dynamic forces? That will result into enormous vibrations, wear, noise, and eventually catastrophic failure of the machine components which is not a good sign and the ends dynamic force analysis is very important. Let me refresh the basic concept. Inertia, what is inertia after all? Inertia is a property of a matter offering resistance to any change of its state. You know, as per Newton's first law, every body wants to be in its original state. If your body is in rest, it would like to remain at rest. If we want to change its that state, it will offer resistance. That property is known as inertia. Please understand. Inertia is a passive property. But inertia will not do any work. When inertia will come into picture, only when we tend to accelerate it. As long as it is not accelerating, there will not be any inertia force. Is that clear? If I am trying to apply external force, which will result into a straight line motion, resistance against straight line motion is, we call it as an inertia force. This is the direction of deceleration of the car. In the opposite direction, the giraffe offers resistance against the negative acceleration. So that's why it goes bending forward. That property is known as inertia. The force that how much I tend to give forward, that force is inertia force. Inertia force will be equal to external force, which is equal to MA, but what about the direction? Always inertia will oppose the acceleration. And hence I put inertia force is equal to minus MA. The same is true with the rotational motion. The M term will be replaced by equivalent mass moment of inertia in case of rotational motion. The applied force will be replaced by torque. Am I right? 
linear acceleration A will be replaced by the term angular acceleration alpha. F is equal to MA, the equivalent Newton's second law is T equal to I alpha. So when I try to apply an external torque on your body, body will oppose it. That resistance torque applied by the body against the applied torque is known as inertia torque. You can write that inertia torque is equal to minus externally applied torque that is equal to minus I alpha. These understandings are variations here. Now, D. Alambert's principle. It says that the inertia forces and torques and the external forces and torques acting on your body together result in statical equilibrium. Or how it can be written? Summation of force minus MA equal to zero. Summation of torques minus I alpha equal to zero. Which is nothing but equations of equilibrium. You know that. Let us see what is the difference between Newton's second law of motion and D. Alambert's principle. Let me explain with one illustration. Let us take a bob, you know, which is connected with a string. So I try to, you know, have a circular motion of a ball from a fixed point. You know what will happen? The popular two forces will be happening. The mass M will exert a force towards the center. Actually, that is the actually acting force. Radially acting inwards, which we technically call it as a centripetal force, not centrifugal. It is called a centripetal force. That is active force. But what will happen to the inertia force? Yes, inertia force will be opposing that centripetal force. In which direction? In the opposite direction. What we call? We call it say, a centrifugal force. For the thing I have illustrated, I would like to draw a free body diagram. The body A is a configuration diagram. So that's a fixed point one. Then the other end I have mass M that is E link two. We assume that it makes a circular motion with constant angular velocity. Move on to free body diagram of link two. F is equal to MA, therefore F12 equal to M omega square R is the active force. That's what we will do normally. This is the traditional method of drawing a free body diagram. We equate the applied force equal to MA. What D. Alambert's done? Only smaller perception he has brought into this concept. Move on to figure C. What he has done in his free body diagram, he has not shown the active force. Instead, he had shown the reactive force. He had shown the inertia force in the free body diagram. Now, he wants to write equations of equilibrium. F12 plus minus MA acting that side, right? So, he can write F12 minus MA equal to 0. D. Alambert shows inertia force in the free body diagram. That is the only difference. Otherwise, both Newton's second law and D. Alambert's principle expression-wise one another same. This D. Alambert's principle will be applied throughout to convert dynamic analysis problem into equivalent static analysis problem so that we can apply statical equilibrium equation to solve the dynamics problem. The point I'm making is I'm trying to explain you one particular application of your D. Alambert's principle, which will be applying throughout this course. Is that clear? Before proceeding to dynamic force analysis of IC engines, we should be knowing kinematic analysis of various parts of the IC engine. If you could remember, we have already covered that in KOM. This is the horizontal IC engine. You know, the gas pressure inside the engine cylinder is the externally applied load. As you could see, the piston uh, reciprocates within one range. So it moves from this what we call inner dead center and outer dead center, which we used to call top dead center and bottom dead center in case of vertical IC engines. You can see there, this is the maximum distance it can travel, which we call it as a stroke L. You could very well see 
when the crank rotates 180 degree one stroke is completed so let us assume initially piston position is p dash and this crank pin position is c dash when gas pressure is applied on the piston head so it will be moving from there to say c double dash so this is my second point so this i assume that it moves to this position this is my p double dash so piston moves from p dash to p double dash this is what we call stroke let theta be the at any given instant crank angle at that position angle made by the connecting rod with the line of stroke i call it as phi or crank radius l length of the connecting rod n obliquity ratio which is nothing but ratio between length of the connecting rod and the crank i need to determine what is the displacement of piston velocity of the piston of course acceleration of the piston without which we cannot determine inertia force we know that angular velocity of the crank equal to if i know the rpm i can find 2 pi n by 60. now how to find displacement when we freeze a engine it will have some angle theta at that position theta how far the piston might have moved that displacement is what we call x okay so we are going to derive a equation for x we can find this by simply putting op dash minus op so how can i find op dash i know p dash c dash plus c dash o will give you the op dash minus how can i find op i can find op pq plus qo this is a basic equation so i can very well write here p dash c dash is nothing but length of the connecting rod plus c dash o is nothing but crank radius minus how can i find uh, pq so this is p this is q how can i find we take this right angle triangle PQC. How can I find PQ? L cos phi. How can I find QO? I can take right angle triangle OCQ. From that I can find OQ is equal to R sin theta. So what can I write here? PQ is equal to L cos phi. Next QO is equal to R cos theta. So now what I am going to do, I am going to rearrange this equation because I need the formula only in terms of theta. So by using binomial theorem, some simplification, we can get this equation. This equation is known as displacement of the piston at any given point of time of an IC engine. Once we know the displacement, we know the formula for velocity. Velocity is nothing but the rate of change of displacement. So applying that logic, we can derive this equation. We'll be getting equation for velocity of piston. How can I find acceleration? Acceleration, we know the rate of change of velocity. Using that logic, we already know velocity of piston in my previous expression. So differentiating that velocity expression, I will be getting the the most important acceleration equation omega square r into cos theta plus cos two theta by n am i right similarly i could derive the remaining equations so directly i am giving you the equation for angular velocity of connecting rod omega pc right normally what happens when theta is very small the sine square theta is very much negligible when compared to n square value. So ignoring that, this will be a simplified equation. Yeah, finally, we got the expression for angular acceleration of connecting rod. This is the equation we got. So I could simplify assuming that sine square theta value is still very lesser when compared to n square. By using that, I get the simplified equation here. So there you are. These are all the formula which we call it as kinematic characteristics 
of an IC engine. So these formulas will be very handy while solving dynamic force analysis of IC engine. Shall we solve a very basic numerical problem using those expressions? Yes, there you are. It's a very a simple, straightforward a numerical problem. This is the given problem. What are the given data? The stroke length is given, 120 meter. Connecting rod is three times the crank radius. So we can find N. How can we find crank radius when we know the stroke length? We know that stroke is equal to two times crank radius. From that R can be found. What are the things we have to find? We have to find velocity and acceleration of piston, angular velocity and angular acceleration of the connecting rod. Okay. So do we have the formula directly? Yes, we have formula directly. Before applying the formula, let us see what is required. In all the formula, all are in terms of crank angle theta. Whether theta is given in this problem? No, not directly. But as you could see here, they have given here, determine the values when the piston has traveled one fourth of its stroke from IDC. You know what is by stroke? When it is in one extreme position, crank angle will be zero. When piston moves towards the other extreme condition, crank would have completed 180 degree rotation. That means for a stroke, 180 degree. So one fourth of your stroke, you are right. One fourth multiplied by 180 degree, that means 45 degree. In 45 degree angle, it will be completing one fourth of the stroke. That is the clue. Yes, these are the formula summary we have. We are going to mere substitute them, apply there. All omega 2 by n by 60 known, radius given, theta known, n equal to L by R known, all are known. Get the record answer, my dear friends. Same way, all are known for acceleration of the piston. This is the record answer. Same way, we can determine other values, namely angular velocity of the connecting rod and angular acceleration of the connecting rod. Mere substitution in the given or known expressions. Fine. If you'd like to solve a few more problems, you can very well uh, do them there. I have given two extra problems for you to solve along with the answers. That's it. And before you go, if you like the work, please support it by subscribing the channel and sharing with all your friends. Let us see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.